Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ed for me and today I'm going to answer all your questions about my electric go-kart. So obviously this video is really long overdue. Uh, I promised you guys I'd make a video detailing this electric go-kart for a while now and I just haven't been able to get around to it so I apologize for that. But I'm here today now to answer all the questions that I've been getting on YouTube about this electric go-kart. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through all the common questions as well as uh, talk about some of the things um, in terms of how to build um, this electric go-kart. Obviously, uh, I said that I was going to do a feature film about it. I haven't been able to get around to that. Uh, and I'm really making this video to not to hold you guys over per se, but um, to basically answer some of the questions that everyone always keeps asking. So the first question that comes up quite often is what I like about the electric go-kart versus the gasoline counterpart um, and what I dislike about it. So right off the bat, what I really like about it is that I can ride it around in my neighborhood uh, and it doesn't bother anybody else. And it's quiet, uh, it doesn't vibrate. So even when I'm going at pretty high speeds, I'm actually, I feel like I, I'm enjoying the experience more uh, because it doesn't hurt my ears after a while. Uh, it doesn't vibrate so much that my head you know, I get a headache from it, for example, um, and I'm really able to enjoy it, show it to other people. It's very different than just the gasoline go-kart, which um, for a lot of people, especially in the, in the suburbs and neighborhoods, uh, a lot of older folks tend to dislike gasoline go-karts, gasoline dirt bikes, and stuff like that, uh, because they're generally loud and noisy. Whereas here, I've gotten nothing but compliments about it. People are always asking me, hey, you know, uh, what is that? Does it, how fast does it go? Um, is it faster than a gasoline go-kart? And most of the time, you know, when I'm able to share this electric go-kart experience with them, they seem to really like it uh, and really, really haven't had any negative feedback about it. So those are really the things that I like about the electric go-kart. On top of that, I really just love the instant torque. Um, the acceleration from zero to its top speed is just insane. Um, and just the versatility of being able to uh, do an electric go-kart build. Uh, the components can always be switched out and you can always upgrade parts and not only incrementally, you know, make changes to the top speed or uh, make changes to the acceleration. Uh, each, comp each component that you upgrade can make a significant difference as to the performance of the go-kart. So for example, I'm sure a lot of you guys watch cars and cameras. They've recently were able to get a 212 Predator up in over 60 miles per hour. Uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, and you know, what they did was they changed the carburetors, they changed a bunch of things and it went up from maybe like 40 something miles per hour to 50 something, 60 something. And a lot of the mods that they did incrementally changed how fast the, the go-kart went. Um, with electric go-karts, uh, you can incrementally change certain parts uh, about it and you can like, for example, the top speed originally on this was about 40 miles an hour. Uh, with the change of a sprocket, because the components were able to handle it, I've been able to get this go-kart over 60 miles per hour, which is definitely a video you guys should um, subscribe uh, to my channel to see uh, that I'll show later on. So I really love that fact about it, that you're able to change parts and dramatically make differences to the ability of this uh, go-kart to perform. Uh, obviously in the frame here is my new dog. This here is Bunny. Say hi to everyone, Bunny. Um, she's a little mini golden doodle, bought her about a month ago, which is partially the reason why YouTube videos have not been, uh, been coming out uh, so often. Um, mainly because this little one's really kind of taken over my wife and I, uh, our lives, uh, and she's just adorable. Say, here, take a look at her. Isn't she just the cutest? So now onto the things that aren't so good about it. Um, first of which is probably the cost. Uh, in order to build an electric go-kart, uh, you can, you have to get a lot of parts, batteries, controllers, motors, throttles, uh, miscellaneous things. And I think the cost definitely is more expensive than, uh, for example, a 212 Predator that you could buy uh, at Harbor Freight. Um, so the cost of entry is kind of high if you want to build something equally as powerful as a 212 Predator. Uh, but at the same time, if you think about it this way, a 212 Predator is kind of like uh, decent and it gets you up to like 40 something miles per hour, 60 something if you're uh, cars and cameras, but you're kind of limited in terms of what it's able to do. Um, you can spend loads and loads of money, obviously, on a gasoline go-kart, uh, just like you can on an electric go-kart. And I think that when you start scaling it up, 
Uh, the expensive gasoline go-karts probably perform similar to expensive electric go-karts. Um, on the other hand, on the cheaper end of things, if you're looking for a really budget build, if you want to get the same performance as a 212 Predator, you're definitely spending more money in order to get an electric counterpart that can do that. Now obviously the system that I've built is um, definitely performing higher than a 212 Predator. Uh, I would consider it similar to probably a 650, um, but definitely at a lower weight than a 650 is. And for electric go-karts, unfortunately, you do need to have a lot more know-how in terms of um, how to maintain batteries. You have to be able to make sure that you know how to handle it so that the batteries don't go bad and you don't have to be uh, changing out that system uh, quite a bit and quite often. Every time that you actually do want to go out and ride, you have to think about it in advance, which is probably the biggest disadvantage similar to electric cars. If you want to go out and ride, you do want like a fully charged battery. So uh, you have to give it a couple of hours for the charger to fill it up um, before you actually go out and play. Obviously the range is not going to be as good as a gasoline go-kart. Uh, also you can just fill up the, um, the gasoline and go riding again. Whereas with this system, you could maybe get by with doing multiple battery packs and swapping them out, which is something you wouldn't be able to do in a car yet. Um, but it still definitely is uh, worse in that way uh, because if you want to switch out battery packs, it, it would probably, the cost would probably be uh, a little bit prohibitive there to keep doing that so that you can keep running uh, the go car without stopping. So that was definitely a very lengthy explanation for what I like and dislike about the electric go-kart uh, versus the gasoline counterpart, but hopefully um, I was thorough enough to answer most of your questions. Next question that I get quite often are what is exactly on this go-kart so that you guys can go out and build it? And this is definitely a question that I've been very hesitant to answer and you'll notice in the comments when I reply, I'll say, okay, I'll tell you guys what parts uh, are required later. Um, not necessarily because it, uh, it's hard for me to type it out and answer you guys. Um, the problem really is because once I tell you guys what you need in order to build this electric go-kart, even if you guys go and buy it, I don't necessarily think that a majority of you guys would be able to um, build it. Now, I definitely know that sounds condescending, like who am I, some dude you know, who can build an electric go-kart and play uh, and say like other people can't do the same thing. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Like I know you guys, a lot of you guys are very intelligent, much smarter than I am and are able to build, you know, far better electric go-karts than I ever could. Um, but for the majority, there, there are a good, good number of people who think that it's just a matter of plugging things together um, and all of a sudden you'll have this working electric go-kart. Whereas there's actually, you know, there's custom made parts in order to make this go-kart and uh, I, I, this isn't my first electric build. I've built tons and tons of electric bikes uh, in the past. I, I've built electric uh, play like dirt bikes. I've built uh, electric tricycles. Um, what else have I built? I just built a number of electric systems before I actually started building uh, this electric go-kart. So while I'm not a complete expert at all this stuff, I'm also not uh, a noob to electric systems as well, which is why I'm hesitant to just lay out the parts all the time when somebody asks, because I don't want you guys to go out and buy all these parts, waste your money because you guys can't put it together. But uh, without further ado, let's go over all the electrical parts of this particular go-kart. So the first thing that we have, let's start with the energy source, the battery packs. These are 4S hard case turnigy packs uh, that are 5 amp hours each. There are 10 packs which are arranged in a um, 20S 2P configuration for a total of 10 amp hours. That will get you a run time uh, maybe like half an hour or so. It's actually not that great, um, but at the same time, uh, you can also, uh, these, are, these packs are modular, so you can always add to the batteries so that they run uh, longer, or you can uh, configure them differently so they run faster or slower. So like I said, these are arranged in a 20S 2P configuration, basically a 72 volt system. There's a total of 740 watt hours on this, uh, and so I've never actually done a range test uh, on this go-kart, because usually when I'm riding it, I ride it pretty rough but I can get anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes of really rough riding um, before the batteries uh, start to get uh, fully depleted. The next thing that I'm gonna talk about is the controller. Uh, the batteries, the 72 volts uh, that the uh, batteries put out goes to the uh, controller. 
they're connected with basically, I think it's six gauge wiring. Um, it might be four or two, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but certainly the wires have never gotten warm here. So six gauge is probably enough for uh, the 120 amps or so that I'm running with this controller. This is a Savoton controller. Uh, Savoton makes really nice controllers. This is their 15,000 watt uh, controller, which is able to handle, I believe, 150 battery amps uh, for for uh, the, the bursts. And then for continuous, uh, I'm not really sure what it's able to handle, probably uh, something in the order of 6,000 watts or so, which will definitely get you to crazy speeds. So anyway, this controller is a three-phase controller. It's able to handle any motor that uses the, it, that's a three-phase motor. Basically, you'll see the uh, blue, yellow, and green wiring uh, which the um, which my particular motor obviously has and this controller actually has a USB cable that you're able to connect to you, your computer uh, so that you can uh, you can tune it uh, you can tune a lot of things on this and um, and I don't want to get too much into it but right off the bat when it comes uh, it's pretty much ready to go uh, after a little bit of tuning so the controller is controlled by a throttle what I have here is a throttle that uh, is made to go on a um, electric uh, golf cart and these uh, throttles basically what I've done is welded it onto the original throttle um, of this uh, of this go-kart I believe that these throttles use a, a hall sensor basically it goes from 0 to 5 volts depending on the positioning and that throttle will control how much uh, acceleration your controller is giving to your motor one really cool thing about this particular controller is that it's actually controlled by current. Um, the throttle controls the amount of current that goes through the motor instead of um, uh, some of the cheaper controllers which are speed-based um, throttles. Um, you guys can look into it for what that really means, but uh, I definitely uh, am beginning to like more current uh, controlled uh, controllers. I think it gives you more refined and better control uh, it allows you to really ride um, the go-kart at a really slow speed and still be able to control it really well versus uh, a speed-based controller, which would be kind of jerky in a sense. All right, so moving on from the controller is the motor. Uh, the motor is probably the least taxed part of my system. Uh, I would say that the controller right now is being maxed out. The batteries are on the verge of being maxed out, whereas the particular motor that I picked, I picked for a very specific reason, and that was because I wanted to be able to upgrade the other parts later um, to kind of maximize the motor. Um, so I actually have to read out the model name for this particular motor because it's extremely long, um, but it's a Mott Energy uh, motor, and the model number is ME. Ready for this? Zero two zero one zero one four two zero one. All right. So I don't know why uh, any brushless motor needs to have such a long model number, but that's what this particular one is. Um, it's actually a, a twenty-four to seventy-two volt DC uh, peak efficiency, ninety percent uh, at, at those voltages. Continuous current of ninety amps at forty-eight volts DC. It's a three-phase Y-connected permanent magnet synchronous motor with axial air gap. It's 22 pounds, so it's by no means a light motor. It's actually really heavy, uh, but it is capable of so much more than what I'm actually throwing at it right now. I've, I've actually never been able to actually uh, even get it uh, hot or warm. Um, so what that tells me is that I can, in the future, upgrade to a more powerful controller get some better batteries and I can get this go-kart going even crazier than it does right now. So that's basically for an overview of all the components that are used to run uh, this electric go-kart. Uh, the other components that are still uh, really important that are a part of this uh, that may not necessarily be unique to electric builds is the mount that I've done, uh, that I've made. It's a custom mount that I welded together uh, for the controller and the motor. And basically the reason why I wanted to put it all in one unit was so that I could transplant it from uh, this particular system onto something else in the future if I wanted to. Uh, the batteries I've kept separate simply because that's just a lot of weight. 22 pounds for that motor plus the motor mount plus the controller is probably already on the verge of 35, 40 pounds or so. I didn't want to put extra batteries uh, on top of that which would just completely throw the balance of this thing off, which is why I've mounted the battery um, here below. I am thinking about uh, uh, trying to figure out a way to mount these batteries on the left side here. Maybe I, I'll build a rack, um, but I'm also looking into a way for me to uh, actually use different uh, use, use different batteries. Um, these obviously are lithium, poly ba lithium polymer batteries, 
I'm thinking about getting into 18650 batteries and, and um, being able to build a larger uh, system uh, that can allow this go-kart to run longer. Um, but that's definitely for the future. Uh, and if I do do that, I'll definitely make use of these racks out here um, in order to uh, build um, some sort of mount for the batteries, uh, which are very modular and can be shaped into any uh, anything that you want. Other than that, everything else is basically like a gasoline go-kart. The brakes are completely stock, tires and wheels are completely stock, uh, and the frame itself was uh, originally built for a, a gasoline uh, engine, so there's really nothing special uh, about that. Um, the sprockets, um, I get a lot of questions about the sizing. Um, I'm a little hesitant to answer that question as well because uh, the sprocket size obviously depends, uh, will depend on how strong your motor is, how strong your controller is, what your batteries can handle, what top speed you're looking for, what kind of uh, acceleration you're looking for. All of these things will play into the sizing of your sprocket. Um, the way that I would start is just probably use what's ever already there. Otherwise, um, around maybe in the rear 56 tooth and the front about 15, that seems to be a standard, like a four, almost like a four to one uh, uh, reduction seems to be the standard for gasoline counterparts. That's probably where you can start for electric counterparts as well. So in order to make this very easy for you guys, uh, I'm going to list uh, all the parts that I used uh, in the description so that you guys can follow along. I know you guys are still gonna have questions about how to build this. I really encourage you to um, go on endless-fear.net. Uh, it's a very good website that I've used since I was probably starting college about like eight years ago now uh, when I started building electric bikes. Some of you guys are probably already on that forum and I really encourage you to just kind of browse and, and look uh, and experiment and just really fill your head with a, a lot of knowledge before you actually attempt to build something like this. I think I would encourage anyone who's thinking about building something like this to just start by building an electric bicycle, something with a very basic system, maybe 24 volts or 36 volts before you actually try and build a massively powerful uh, electric system such as this one. So I hope I've been able to answer most of the questions that you guys have had. Um, if you guys still have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them and I'll also try and put out more videos about the electric go-kart for those of you who are waiting to see that. So I wanna say thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. If this video was helpful for you, please leave it a like. Consider subscribing to my channel. I'm gonna do more videos on the go-kart, on different cars, on just random projects that I have going on in the house. So um, thank you guys for watching again and I'm Zed for me. I'll see you guys next time.